A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thomas. This is the Nerdist here, and welcome to this special games guide edition. And today we're going to look at the Slav faction in Barbarian Invasion. And indeed, Barbarian Invasion is a treasure trove of odd ideas and experimentation. It's just a marvellous DLC, really. They tried things like the Hordes, which you obviously see in Medieval 2 with the Mongols and Temerids. You see night battles. You see things like an in-depth religious system. And actually, the, the thing we're really looking at today is the emergent factions, such as the Slavs here. Now, actually, they've got a few in this game. They've got the Romano British, who who appear over there in Britain if the British territory, Britannia Superior, is lost by the Romans. Or, indeed, you could have the Ostrogoths, albeit I only have the Goths on this as well. But the Slavs will appear at a certain point in the game, at 410 AD. It's quite late in the game, you might notice. And they kind of act as a mid to late game crisis, much like you see in lots of modern uh, strategy games today, like Stellaris, for instance. Um, and for 2005, this is quite a sort of fresh idea to really throw in an extra bit of difficulty. Now, the thing is, on Barbarian Invasion, right at the start of the game, you have the Vandals and the Huns, and right away they'll trigger the Sarmatian Horde, and they'll often trigger the Gothic Horde. The Ostrogoths might be triggered as well as an emergent faction. And you have this big, this huge war, you know, of just trying to hold the gates from the Barbarians. And obviously that's what they wanted to create. But obviously the game eventually settles down a bit. And by this point in the game, you know, I've conquered the Sassanids. Obviously played as the Eastern Romans here. Um, I've taken back half of the Western Romans territory. And actually there's nothing really to stop me steamrolled around the game. And that is a classic problem with strategy games in general. But the, the Slav faction kind of become this mid to late game crisis and in themselves they're not any more powerful than any other horde. But what they will do is they just create a bit more chaos again. Because by this point a lot of the time the, the hordes have settled down. And if they were for example to come this way they'd probably re-trigger the Sarmatians and likely the Vandals again. And I'd have three hordes on my gates at Constantinople once more. Indeed actually over this end of the world I actually had the Franks and the uh, Lombardi over here are already actually hoarding. And with two single city horde factions here, it's quite likely we're going to get an absolute swathe of horde factions in the late game here, which just causes so much chaos, makes it so much more interesting and difficult to play. And to be honest, the barbarian invasion factions are a little bit trickier than the base game for sure. So it is definitely a welcome improvement in Barbarian Invasion. But today specifically we're going to look at the Slavs and how you can play as them. I know there's somewhat, somewhat that takes away from that late game crisis but it kind of just adds more chaos to the start and it can be quite fun just to play as the Slavs. You can of course actually, the way I'm going to do this means that you can play as them at this point of the game by skipping forward in time or you can simply do it right from the start. But I'll get into that in a moment. Last thing before I show you that though, I just want to mention because obviously the Slavs are quite a pertinent people historically. They were one of these later Horde factions in terms of this particular era. We tend to think of the Vandals and the, and the Huns and things like that. But of course the Slavs, modern day Europe is, near, well 40 to 50, like quite a large proportion of Europe nowadays is ethnically Slav or has some sort of Slavic basis. You have all of the Balkans down here, there's a huge Slavic influence in that area. Um, and also like Russia, Poland, Slovakia, there's a big Slavic influence there. So, you know, for role playing, this can be quite a fun one to do. Come down, maybe smash Constantinople, that could be a bit of fun, and come and build yourself that Balkan kingdom of the Slavs once more. And indeed, uh, Slav, in Slavs in, in the Slavic languages tends to mean something on the lines of glory. So we're going to be looking to play as the Slavs and bring glory back. Well, not back, but we're going to make a glorious, glorious lives for our Slavic heroes here. Assuming you know where your Steam library folder is, you can head into Steam Maps, Common and Rome Total War. Inside there, there is the BI for Barbarian Invasion folder. That is just a subfolder just for Barbarian Invasion. The rest is all for the base game. So you want to go in there and into data. Down at the bottom is world. And then you want to head into maps, campaign, and back into Barbarian Invasion. Now this is the file you're looking at, desk strat. Um, that's the one that's going to be most of the main files you want to change. Once you've opened the desk of strat file, you'll find yourselves with a basic kind of text file. And we're going to highlight the slavs here. 
and cut them out of the non-playable and paste them into the playable section. Simple enough. You can actually do this for the slaves with the rebels, Roxani, Lombardi, Burgundy and the Celts. You can move them up here and that's all you need to do. It's as simple as that. But we need to do a little bit more. So we'll save at this point, but we need to do a little bit more yet. So I'm going to control F to find ourselves the Slavs. And that will bring us down to the Slav faction here. And you can see there isn't a lot of information for it. At the moment it is just dead until resurrected. First thing we want to do is take that away. Now at the moment we don't have any cities. So what will happen is the game will go. Faction destroyed. Sorry your reign is over. Bye. Back to main menu. How do you get around that then? Um, well what we need to do is head down to the slaves actually. So I'm going to go for Barbaricum. And this is actually the city we want. This is the region that the Slavs will traditionally enter in. You can actually pick whichever city you want. I'm just picking this one because that's kind of, you know, the kind of done thing. It's it's the standard kind of choice. It's where they normally are. So it's going to keep it as authentic as possible. So if I have the Slavs and go back up to them because I got lost. No, I've got lost again. Back down. <laughs> Here we are. Right, once you've gotten back to the Slavs, you can simply paste that settlement details in there. So it's a tiny settlement. To be honest, we just needed to get the game working at the start. I'm going to hoard the factions so that we can play as you normally would. But for now, it will give us a way to get the game working because otherwise the game isn't very happy. So what we want to do now is get ourselves a general. So to do that, I'm going to head back down to the slaves where I just was. And they are a little bit further down. You can, of course, drag all the way down. And as you might expect, the rebels are somewhere towards the bottom. But you'll probably get yourselves quite lost if you do this all the time. There we are. We are actually in that particular bit now with the slaves. So underneath all the settlement details, you'll find the character details. So I'm just going to take this first lad here. Um, partly because when I originally tried to do this, I thought that was the correct one. But um, just checking the amount of gaps there is just one. But uh, mainly because I've had problems trying to do it the other way. So I'm going to head back up to Slavs. And underneath here, I can give myself my character. I think it's just one space. I will use the Burgundy eye to check. You see, yes, there's one space between that bracket and our guy here. Now, we have a slight problem now with this as well. Um, I will change his age just to kind of keep things working for me, but more to the point at the moment he's just a general, he's not a leader. So I make him a leader, which basically makes him faction leader kind of role. You can see it down here. Advocat is the, is the guy that we've been killing in uh, the Rebel campaign. Uh, named character, so I need to add the named character into it as well. So Gunthermund, the sub faction there being vandalism because he's a rebel. Um, so named character. Once we've added that in with our little comma there, we should be largely in the right position to do it. I'm just going to add one more thing into here, which is the faction leader trait. Not sure it's strictly necessary, but I want to add it in anyway because he's a faction leader. He's going to be a general. And one last thing this is actually not the right city. This is, in fact, um, I think the city's to the south of it. So we just need to change the x and y coordinates here. So what we need to do is find a lad called Brino. The only issue with Brino, and the reason I don't just take him in the first place, is I think that he is technically a part of the family. If you go down far enough, yeah, you can see relative of Adderwolf, who's the rebel guy, and this guy's rebel, because I remember him from my campaign. Um, he's actually a rebel character, so he's part of the family, and I think that maybe slightly confuses the game. So we want to change our guy to 141, 149. 141, 149. So let's head back up to the Slavs. And we're going to change it to 141. 149. Perfect. That should be what we need to do to get our game running. One more thing that might be worth bearing in mind is this little file here, the Desker Events. Now, on here is where it will normally say about the Slavs coming into play yes you see here slavs in 40 in the summer for turn 47 or something like that or the 47th year i think is what it is so the game has that planned in now i don't think this matters once the faction is actually enacted but you can take it out and if you take it out it doesn't 
doesn't have any negative effects at all. It's probably better to take it out than to leave it in, in many ways, just in case it has an effect. But I have moved it up and turned it up to like date two, and it hasn't had any effects because the faction already exists. So I'm pretty certain that it shouldn't actually glitch your game much later on, which would be quite frustrating. I just say take it out. I had no problems with this file taken out. And with that, I think we are completely ready now to get on to the game itself. And onto the main menu here, and you can see the slabs are now a playable faction on the game. And actually, we're clicking them. Whilst it says difficulty factor, non playable, uh, we, it does actually have a proper description there, which is quite nice. It tells you all about their trips down from the Carpathian Mountains, etc., etc., and why they've got the name they do, which is just marvellous. So, if we start playing as them, hopefully it's going to work because. I've just gone through all that description for you, I wouldn't want to have made one tiny mistake, but it looks like it's going to do it for us. Luck is important, indeed it is Libby, yes we made it work, storm from the east. And there we are, we are not that storm, but it's working perfectly fine. There, for some reason Rome Total War has just updated itself for me, so um, all my settings are wrong and the advisor's coming up. But there we are, it's been a long time since seen the advisor, and there we are, going for mind our faction leader. Uh, and yeah, marvellous, faction leader at 16. And now all we need to do is click the horde button. We'll ignore her. And now we've got ourselves a lovely horde army. And it will have... Oh, I need to change this, the settings here. We're on really low numbers at the moment. Uh, yeah, so we have got ourselves an awful set of new young leaders to help us along, which is just what we want to see. And now from this point onwards, you can roleplay the game how you want. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sit around until 4.10, like, uh, which I think is about the normal date that the Slavs arrive. And I'm just going to let the chaos in sheer around the map. And after that, then I'm going to come and march down. And I think what I might do is a bit of roleplay and take over the good Slavic kingdoms all the way around here. I think actually you do have an official, um, yeah, feature condition, hold 14 settlements, including Constantinople. So uh, the game isn't bugging out here. It does have a victory condition ready for you. You do have family tree, that does work. Um, obviously it was just this guy, but these guys have been pulled out of his ass as he's created the hordes. So you do have more men. The only reason I made him young, by the way, was only because if I'm going to wait around lots of years, well, I don't want to who's had the family tree die out. So um, it shouldn't do. The game does like to keep that ticking over as long as you don't kill them in battle. But I just want to be sure that he's going to hang around for a while and I can have a bit of fun later on in the game. But there we are. That gets you set up as the slabs. If I just use the toggle the fog of war here, you can see that we've got our usual map, we've got our other hordes all the same, we've got the Vandals over here, we've got the Huns over here, we've got the Roxolani and the, and the Sarmatians ready to be hoarded. But yeah, I can just hang over in this corner of the map. I will just point out that Burgundii are going to come for this settlement, so you might want to run off into this corner, or actually, it might actually be up here by the old Roman Themyscira. Um, or the old town on the original game, that is. You might just want to move your troops out of the way just so that they don't kind of attack you. I think you should be fine as long as you kind of step out. You could just sit in that city for a while, but by doing it this way, you are you don't pay for anything. So when I end turn, for example, I'm just going to turn all this off because otherwise it's going to go through everyone. And you can see yeah, we don't actually expend money as a horde, which is worth remembering. I really should have actually looked at the end of turn <laughs> report because it would actually illustrate what I'm telling you. And yeah, you can see there, there isn't anything to worry about. We've got no cities and horde factions don't pay any income. Only thing that's happening is uh, that these lads are getting older. So there you are. Have a little fun playing as the slabs. I might do a little short campaign as them and just try and smash down to Constantinople. Should be a good bit of fun. And uh, yes, until next time, I'm Thomas. I've been to Nose the Human. And this has been a little bit of a guide to playing as the slabs in Rome to the Wars by Baron Invasion. Thank you, and good night. Twice Bates Italian is on the menu today. Infantry, come kill the Mongol scum. <laughs> this is just perfect, look at it! Look at their infantry line, it's been annihilated by their own elephants. Death comes to flying Mongols.